Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm very excited to be sharing with you a new facial cream formula. So this is something that I'm super excited about because there are components of this facial cream that I've been wanting to work with for probably the last two years, maybe even longer, and I finally got around to acquiring all the ingredients, making some of the ingredients to make this facial cream possible. In this video today, I'm gonna to be going over my full visual process and tutorial of how to make this luxurious facial cream and also a quick overview of how I created one of the extracts to go into this facial cream. So without further ado, let's get started. So there are some really unique and exciting ingredients going into this formula today. And as we go along, I will go ahead and suggest substitutions in case you can't make this or acquire some of the ingredients that I've acquired here. This beautiful little bottle here is a bottle of Camellia glycerite or an extract that I made myself out of the camellia flowers in my yard. None of my flowers are treated with pesticides or insecticides or anything like that. So this is a totally clean product. Now, why would I wanna be adding camellia flowers to my facial care products? Camellias are very well known for their anti-inflammatory, soothing and anti-aging properties. And because they're a winter bloom, if you're native to Northern California or areas like Northern California, you're probably very familiar with camellia flowers. And these happen to be from a red variety that grow in my yard. And actually in my research of camellias in facial care use, um, Chanel, the company Chanel has made some sort of elixir, skin elixir out of camellias as well, which I found really fascinating. So they're great for anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, and soothing. Camellias are also a winter bloom, so they're well known to withstand harsh environments, making the phytochemicals in the plant that more potent. So I have been wanting to make an extract or a glycerite out of my camellias now for about two years. And this year we got some really beautiful blooms. I'll go ahead and show you a little snippet right here of how I created the camellia glycerite. So then after the glycerite was created, I started coming up with all of these ideas. I'm gonna be sharing them with you also in the following weeks, what else I formulated with this beautiful, beautiful camellia extract. So let's go ahead and get started on the making process. And the first thing we're gonna do is weigh off the heated phase for this formula. Now we're making a very luxurious cream and actually I have formulated it two ways. This formula will be available over on my Patreon campaign. Actually, both of the formulas I'm gonna put into the same tutorial in case you want to create a thinner version or a little bit of a thicker version. So today I'm gonna to be making a little bit of the thicker version, but if you head on over to my campaign, this will be available over there along with every other recipe I've ever published. So I hope you go ahead and check that out. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off the heated phase we're gonna weigh the heated water phase into the smaller beaker because eventually we're gonna be putting everything into the larger beaker. So this is my smaller water phase beaker and we're just making a 100 gram batch today. So what I'm gonna be putting in here is some distilled water. We're gonna be also using some rose water and some chamomile water as part of our 
waters here. This is going to give it a nice and botanical fragrance without the use of essential oils or fragrance oils. The rose, the camellia, and the chamomile go really well together. So they just it just smells so fresh and botanical. So we're going to go ahead and weigh off. I'm hoping I have enough rose water left here. I'm running very low. Perfect. Next up, we're going to be weighing off some chamomile water. Now, roses and chamomiles are also very good for facial care and skin care in general. Roses are great and well known for their mildness and their tightening and toning properties. And then chamomile is very well known for its soothing and calming properties. Next up, we're going to be adding in this beautiful camellia glycerite. Camellias just kind of have a very faintly floral fragrance. They're not overpowering at all in how they smell. They smell fresh, floral, and a little bit green. And I find mixed together with these botanical waters, they, it smells so, so fresh and good. This is a really, really nice, naturally smelling facial cream. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our extract here. It's gonna turn this a very light, light pink that actually will not really show through in the finished product. You have to be real, looking really hard to notice to see if there's a, a color to this finished product without enhancing it with another synthetic color. And there we go. So the Camellia extract is gonna add the beautiful anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, and soothing properties. But since this is partially made or mostly made of glycerin as well, it is gonna be hydrating too. It's gonna to add some hydrating properties. So the following ingredients also coming up here, I've been wanting to incorporate into a cream for a long time. And this just all came together as a beautiful formula. So the next thing we're gonna be adding is some honey. Honey is very rich in its humectant properties, also meaning it's gonna be drawing moisture to your skin and helping your skin to retain moisture. Honey is also very healing and anti-aging. I'm using some raw, unfiltered honey. This is honey that was collected in Northern California. So the honey and the camellias are really from my area, which is amazing. I love that. Okay, honey is also very moisturizing. So there is the heated water phase, there's that. So I'm gonna reveal what I think I'm gonna call this cream as we go along and I introduce more of the ingredients here, but this is what's all going into the water phase. And right now it just looks like a lovely light pink color. I'm just mixing in that honey and making sure it gets all dissolved. While I was formulating this, I was really nervous to be using this high amount of humectant and honey, and I really thought, oh no, we're gonna get a sticky cream. And in my opinion, this is not a sticky cream at all. The ratios are just perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and set aside the water phase, and then we're gonna go ahead and weigh off the heated oil phase. So I'm gonna be using some apricot kernel oil for the oil. You could sub this out by the way, if you didn't want to use any of the botanical waters, I forgot to mention, you could certainly swap it out for just plain distilled water. And if you didn't want to use or couldn't use the camellia extract or couldn't make it, you can use just plain glycerin in its place. It'll still make a lovely cream. So next up, I'm weighing off some apricot kernel oil into this heated oil face beaker. And the apricot kernel oil is just a very lightweight, airy oil, and it feels very silky on the skin. All right, in goes the apricot kernel oil. You could sub this out for any other light carrier oil of your choice. 
jojoba oil would be a good one, avocado oil, sunflower seed oil. There we go. So next up, I'm gonna be adding in my emulsifier. Now the emulsifier is necessary, it's a necessary component to combine your oils and water. If you don't have an emulsifier here, your oils and waters will separate just like an oil and vinegar salad dressing and it won't it will not stay combined so you need the emulsifier there's all types of emulsifiers i'm using ritamulse scg emulsifying wax for two reasons it has a really nice skin feel making it really lovely actually for facial care products because it's lightweight and silky feeling and it doesn't leave like a waxy or heavy feel on your skin. I'm gonna weigh it off into this little tiny container here so I, because my other scale doesn't weigh in half grams. And this actually happens to have a half gram. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh this off on this small beaker, this small little container here. And this also will help contribute to the thickness of the cream. So Ritamols is just a nice one. Ritamols SCG, it's self emulsifying. So you wanna make sure if you're getting up the Ritamols or you have a Ritamols, that it's the Ritamols SCG. Okay. So once the Ritamols is weighed off, I'm gonna go ahead and also weigh off my beeswax into this same container. So you may be seeing a theme starting to develop here. I've used honey and now I'm using beeswax and I've used flowers. So we are making sort of a bee and floral themed facial cream. Now beeswax, this is gonna help contribute to the thickness. This is gonna be where we get most of our thickness from the beeswax. I'm just using a white cosmetic grade beeswax from Nature's Garden. Now, beeswax is gonna to contribute to the thickness like I explained, but it is also a very, very good product to add to skincare formulas like facial creams and lotions because it's going to act as a little bit of a barrier to your skin and it's going to help to hold and the hydration and all of the other ingredients that we're putting into our facial care it's going to help to form a barrier and a light film and keep it into your skin now this in this rate that i'm using the beeswax it feels super good on the skin it's not heavy at all um, it just kind of soaks right in and just helps your skin stay moisturized the whole day. So this is also a very healing product to use. Honey, beeswax, bee pollen, all of those are very rich in antioxidants and vitamins and they're very good for your skin. So we're gonna go ahead next and add in a little bit of a co-emulsifier you don't have to use this in this cream. Um, I really like the skin feel and the final outcome when I use this next ingredient in this cream because it gives it a slight gel-like texture and a little bit of a bounce, which I think really balances out with the beeswax and the honey. So we're gonna go ahead and use some Sepamax Zen at a very low rate. That is Inky Polyacrylate and Cross Polymer 6. If you can't come across Sepamax Zen that I got at Lotion Crafter, you can make your own Polyacrylate and Cross Polymer 6 with just a 50-50 blend if you can come across both of those ingredients. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh this off. This is gonna create a little bit thicker uh, of an emulsion along with a little bit of a gel just slightly a gel kind of lightweight creamy texture. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it off also into this little container here, just to make sure I'm getting the accurate amount. This is a very lightweight powdery ingredient, so it's easier to weigh off on a small scale 
By the way, most of these, most of the equipment needed for this project can be found over on my Amazon affiliate link. I'll go ahead and place that in the description box for you guys. Um, the scales, the beakers, the spoons, the rods, um, er mostly everything I'm using here today you can find over on my Amazon link. Okay, there we go. I just, I really hope that you guys give this one a try. Again, if you can't get a hold of this Epimax Zen, you can omit it and you can just add it back into the water phase. You really don't need to substitute it with anything else, but I just really like the way the final outcome came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the Ritamulse, the beeswax, the Sepamax Zen into my apricot kernel oil as part of my oil phase. There we go. And that is gonna be it for my oil and water phase ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and I'm gonna go ahead and weigh off my cool down phase ingredients so that they are ready to go when we're ready to go. We're gonna to have to go ahead and heat up the other ingredients, but I wanna make sure and have these weighed off and ready to go so that they're ready to add in when, when we want to. I'm just gonna weigh everything off into this little half of a bath bomb container. Just use something small. Again, we're making a very small 100 gram batch. So into this one, this is gonna go into our lotion formula, our cream formula, when everything is down to about 100 degrees. So the first thing I'm gonna add in here is some polyquaternium seven. Polyquaternium seven, this is gonna help a little bit with hydration and moisture, but mainly I'm using it for its skin feel. So because we're using some ingredients that might cause a little bit of a dragging feeling like the beeswax, this polyquaternium seven really helps with the slip and the glide and it has a very silky finish and, and it actually helps you use a little bit less of product because it gives the ability to kind of smooth and smooth it over kind of a larger area of skin. It's an inexpensive ingredient to come by. I highly recommend it if you don't have it. Um, Polyquaternium 7 is something that's also found in shampoos and body washes, shaving creams, all for its like ability to be lubricating and hydrating and silky feeling. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in. And if you didn't have this one, you could just use cyclomethicone. So next into my cool down phase, I'm gonna be adding in some royal jelly. This is pure royal jelly. This is an expensive product. I did get this off of Amazon. There's other places you can get it from. I was able to find a pure 100% royal jelly on Amazon, and I just got the smallest container I could find, which is two ounces, and this does have to stay refrigerated. Now, as you can see, this is coming out to be a very bee and honey floral themed facial cream, and royal jelly is amazing for its skin benefits, and it's also used as a dietary supplement. So if you're not familiar with this product, Basically, it's like a waxy, milky type substance that bees feed baby bees, and they make it, and they feed it to the baby bees, and it's full of nutrients, packed full of vitamins and nutrients, and actually, your skin really likes it too. So interestingly enough, the royal jelly is also fed to the queen bees for their whole life. That's why it's called royal jelly, and that's why the queen bees get so big and strong. So we're gonna be using some royal jelly here in the cool down phase. This is a very delicate ingredient. You definitely wanna keep it into the cool down phase. Now, if this is an ex too much of an expense or you don't have it or you don't wanna source it or find it or it's too expensive, you can definitely just replace the royal jelly with bee pollen extract, which we're gonna be using as well in just a minute. You can just up the bee pollen extract in this formula but it's just it's got a really fresh beautiful kind of floral beeswax um, fragrance to it oh perfect i weighed out just the right amount 
I'm just using, actually we need a little bit more, the tiniest bit in here. I think I don't want, part of the reason why I formulated it with a very low amount is because I want to make sure that my cream doesn't feel tacky or sticky. And also with these actives, you don't need a whole lot to make a difference in your skincare products. Just a little bit more. So this is just another byproduct of something that bees make. So in addition to honey, propolis, beeswax, bee pollen powder, you also have royal jelly. You could definitely substitute that one for a different extract of your choice. Next up, I'm gonna be adding in some bee pollen extract. I got this one from Crafter's Choice. Again, just something that is full of vitamins and nutrients, very good for your skin. We're gonna go ahead and add this in. If you didn't wanna use royal jelly or it was too expensive, you can just substitute it with more bee pollen extract. All right. The last thing we're gonna be adding in the cool down phase is our preservative. Now it's very important to use a preservative because we're making an oil and water emulsion and oils and waters, when you combine them, if you don't add a preservative, they will grow bacteria very quickly. So we're using Optifin preservative today. And also since we're using Royal Jelly, Royal Jelly does expire and it is considered a food product. So we're gonna go ahead and Definitely make sure we use the correct amount of preservative. Um, honey is one that just never expires. And actually it has some antibacterial properties to it. But with the royal jelly, you wanna make sure and always use a preservative. All right, I'm just gonna give my cool down ingredients a little bit of a stir and then I'm gonna set them aside. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. I'm gonna heat up my water and oil phases until everything is melted down and we're sitting right around 160 degrees because we need that beeswax to melt down properly. I'll bring you back when everything is melted down. Okay, my oil and water phases are now both sitting right at 160 degrees, so it's time to go ahead and combine them together. Now, you're gonna see some chunks of Sepamax Zen in there, it doesn't dissolve in the oil, but you wanna disperse it in there in the heated oil phase before adding the water. So it's okay, don't worry if you see chunks, it will all blend out. So we're gonna go ahead and pour it in directly into our heated oil phase, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna emulsify this on low speed. All right, so right away you see this cream starting to take shape. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break from the blending. I'm gonna hand stir it for just a minute just to make sure we pick up any of that 7 Max Zen that might be stuck down to the bottom of the beaker here. And again, I will show you the difference between this, the consistency of this one, and the consistency of the thinner version of the same cream. And then you can decide which one you wanna make, or if you wanna make both, which one you like the best. Just giving us a little bit of a stir with a spatula, just picking up anything that might be stuck on the bottom. All right, we have a good emulsion going here. I'm gonna go ahead and stick blend this a little bit more just to make sure we have a stable emulsion. And then I'll bring you back when we're ready to add in those beautiful cool down ingredients. All right, so the cream is now sitting at right around 100 degrees Fahrenheit and it's got a really beautiful emulsion happening here with a very nice texture 
We're gonna go ahead and add in the cool down ingredients now. It, don't be alarmed, it is gonna thin out this product. Everything's still rather warm at 100 degrees. So it will thin out this product as you add in the cool down ingredients until it gets a little cooler and then it will thicken up to a really nice, beautiful consistency. So here we go with our cool down ingredients. That royal jelly, polyquaternium 7, bee pollen extract. Really, really nice, beautiful ingredients here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with just my spatula first and give this a good stir. Then I'm gonna put the immersion blender back in and just make sure everything gets fully emulsified into the cream. All right, now we're just gonna allow this to get to room temperature so I can show you the final consistency before we package it up. But I'll go ahead and let you know what I'm gonna be calling this cream. So I'm gonna be calling this cream of the bees, anti-aging facial cream. It's just super full of beautiful bee product ingredients and also floral and botanical ingredients and of course the flowers are dependent on the bees for their blooms and their blossoms and so we're just going to call this one of the bees all right so this cream has reached right around room temperature in my house that's about 72 degrees fahrenheit this is about 73 degrees right now so we're very very close and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and package it up into this little cube shaped pump container. And I'll show you the other one I made that's a more uh, fluid, a little bit more fluid of a consistency. This one is still very lightweight, just a slight bit more thick in consistency than the first one. And I'll show you the difference between the two. And I will again be providing both formulas over on my Patreon campaign. I'm not gonna add any color to this one. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but it is a slight, slight pink, when you, especially when you compare it to something that's white. You can sort of see a little bit of that pink from the Camellia extract. And I'm just gonna leave this one in its natural state, its natural color. I got these little cube shaped containers on Amazon. I'll go ahead and put them also in my Amazon link to my affiliate link because they hold, if you're just doing little test batches of 100 grams, they hold 100 grams perfectly. And they're a very cute shape. There we go. All right, there it is all packaged up. And this one is the slightly thicker variation. This one over here I made earlier is a slightly thinner variation. I did add a tiny bit of color to make this pink um, and left this one in its natural color. So I want to go ahead and show you the difference between the two. So this is the one we made today. I just love the natural color of it. It's got just ever so slightly a pink hue just ever so slightly so i just want you to see how this pipes how it pipes up on your skin after it comes out of the pump i'm going to prime this a little bit there you go see that it just comes out beautifully and then you can just sort of smooth it all into your skin your neck your face it's got a beautiful slightly botanical fresh flower and you can smell a very faint hint of that honey beeswax kind of smell it's beautiful it smells like being outside on a spring day to be honest 
but it's very faint. It's not an overpowering smell at all. So there's that one. And then here's this one. This one may pipe up a little bit thicker looking just because it's had, you know, several weeks to set up at this point. But there's that one. And this one actually is a bit more watery in consistency, yet still goes on very non-greasy, super hydrating. I think you guys are really going to love this formula. And both variations of this formula will be available to you over on my campaign. The link to my campaign is in the description box below. I hope you'll check it out. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please leave me some comments and questions below. That really means a lot to me. Share this video with a friend and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Keep shining. Bye.